Hello everyone, I'm Dad Mishima and we're back to bring you another installment of Classic Gaming. This video covers World 2 of Super Mario Bros. 3. Now before we get started, there's a few things that we missed in the last video. So with that being said, let's cover those now. The coin ships can be accessed in worlds 1, 3, 5, and 6. Basically, these are special areas that are bonus levels. But before you can play them, there are certain criteria that must be met. First, you must have at least 11 coins or any other double digit that is the same. So in this example, I collected 33 coins. Next, we have to make sure that the 10's place in our score is the same number based off of our coins. So in my case, that number is 3. Finally, before hitting the gold box at the end, make sure the one's place on the timer is an even number. If everything was done correctly, you will see that the Hammer Brothers on the map will be converted into a coin ship. ship itself plays just like an airship, but it doesn't have cannons and bullet bills. Instead, you will be greeted with an abundance of coins, and just like the airships, D levels auto scrolls as well. There's enough coins here for almost two one-ups. Also, make sure to grab the one-up near the warp pipe at the end. Now enter the warp pipe and take out the two boomerang brothers to receive the contents of the treasure. And that's it. So, at the end of every level, Mario and Luigi will get a chance to collect a card once they hit the gold box. There's three types of cards to collect. There's the mushroom cord, the flower cord, and the store cord. It doesn't matter which cards you receive, when you collect three of them, you will gain an extra life. However, if you collect three of the same cord, then a multiplier effect is added to your one up. It's the same as playing the mini game, where you're trying to pair up the correct pitcher. Three mushroom cards will give you two ups. Three flower cards will give you three ups, and three star cards will give you five. Now, from my understanding, there is a way to manipulate the gold box into giving you the desired card, and it's all based on speed. So when you hit the gold box with little to no run speed, most likely you will get a mushroom card. If you hit the gold box with at least half a run meter, or medium run speed, most likely you will gain a flower card. And if you hit the gold box at top speed, most likely you will receive a star card. Please keep in mind that there are still things that can decrease your chances for gaining the card you want, such as jumping into the gold box from the wrong angle, or enemies that's placed directly underneath it, which can impede your movement. It's time to get the show on the road. Let's head to 2-1 now. This level is not difficult and there's no secrets here. Head to the right. Be mindful of the power driver Micro Goomba who are small sized Goombas hidden inside these bricks. Don't let them get the drop on you. As we navigate to the right, take out the Red Trooper, then clear the path for flight. Now you can choose to fly up to the warp pipe if you like, and it's totally optional. Once inside, hit the P block, then grab all of the blue coins.
Now continue to the right and head for the gold box. Make sure to watch out for the power driver Goomba at the end. Two dash two is the level we need to collect at least thirty coins so we can unlock the white mushroom house. From the start, go to the right. Make sure to avoid any quicksand as you continue. At this point, hop on the floating platform while collecting coins as you go. Make sure to hit the right brake while crouching, then hop on the P block. Now quickly collect all the converted coins before the P-Block's power wears off. Now we have to backtrack a bit and collect the coins that became bricks under the P-Block's influence. So do the best that you can to avoid those cheat cheeps as you make your way. Also he caught me there. So, now let's head back for the warp pipe at the end and that should be enough coins to unlock the white mushroom. With the white mushroom house unlocked, let's head there now to acquire the anchor item. This item will stop airships from moving upon losing a life. So yeah, it can be useful indeed. This would be our first encounter with a mini boss known as Boom Boom. At the very beginning of the level, you can do the one up trick similar to the one that's done in 1-2 from World 1. Use the three dry bones to rack up your points. Remember, you have to have Raccoon Mario for this to work. Be careful of these enemies called thrums. Allow them to fall first, then make a dash for it when they return to the ceiling. Keep heading right, and do the same thing to get past the second thwomp. Wait for it to fall first, then quickly run underneath it as it rises back to the ceiling. Now let's head up the warp pipe here, and let's get past this third thwomp. There's a power up in the brick. I believe it was a raccoon leaf, but I got hit before I could get it. Anyways, keep your eye on the ghost enemies called Boo. They can't be defeated, but you can stop them by facing in their direction. Let me replay that. Make sure to run at top speed to get past this point without taking damage. In this room, we need to avoid the spikes as they move in an up and down manner. Let's take the high path here and make sure to jump to the next pillar safely. Now manipulate the bull by turning away from it so he can get closer, then hop over it to the other side. Now let's enter the room for a boss fight. Boom Boom will try to rush you by quickly moving left to right. Hop on his head and when he shows his spikes like this, do not jump on him or you will take damage. Now if you have good timing, you could actually jump on him to cancel his next attack, but the timing itself is very tight. Hit Boom Boom three times to score the win. With the fortress defeated, Let's make our way to the Hammer Brothers first. Then we will go to 2 3.
big mistake there. Oh well. So we just got the music box, which will make all enemies on the map fall asleep. This can be another useful item, especially if you're running low on power up items. Head to the right. Be mindful of the flaming enemies called fire snakes who first appear in 2-1. They hop around from place to place, hoping to set Mario and Luigi on fire. Alright, so we have two fire snakes here. You can take them out with a Koopa shell or a raccoon tail, but the risks are too great because of the way it moves. So a little to the right here, we will find a raccoon leaf in the left item block. Collect that if needed. At this point, we have more Power Driver Micro Goomba to deal with. You don't have to defeat all of them, just take your time and make sure they don't land on top of you. Now when you arrive at the end, Make a pathway by kicking the Koopa shell. Make sure to get out of the way since the shell will be bouncing back and forth. When the path is clear, enter the warp pipe to complete the level. Let's head to the end car mini game. This is the game where we must match up a pair of cards. For every pair that we match correctly, we will have that item added to our inventory. If we match a pair wrong twice, then the game ends. The end car mini game is initiated for every 80,000 points earned. Here's the level where we must escape the angry sun. That's right, I hate you. From the start, head to the right. Make sure to avoid the quicksand areas as you move across the level. Now, we won't have to worry about the sun until about midway through. This tornado moves Mario to the left, but it won't hurt you. To get past it, simply run at full speed and jump through it. Now the sun will become active. Every five seconds or so, the angry sun will try to burn Mario to a crisp. Simply get the timing right and jump over him every time he comes down. At this point, I was trying to take out the sun with the Kuba shell. Oh well. So we're almost at the end. Make sure to avoid both the sun and the quicksand and head for the finish. Let's grab a raccoon leaf from Toad's house. We need this so we can take the shortcut in 2-4. So head right, take out the pair of Goomba, then get enough space to run back towards the left. When you do, fly upwards towards the upper left and break a few bricks on your way up. This leads to the upper path, which is the easier route to take on this level. While up here, gather coins as you proceed to the right. This path is definitely easier than the normal route, plus, you can get a little more coins going this way. Find a P-block located near the right edge of these bricks and collect those coins as well.
when that's done, head down and grab more coins from the left if you like, or simply finish the level. Be mindful of the boomerang brother that is waiting underneath the gold box. Two dash five is straightforward, and there's no secrets here. As you proceed to the right, stay out the path of the chain chomps. These guys will desperately try to bite Mario, but you'll be safe as long as you stay out of range. The chain chomps first appearance was from this game. Afterwards, they became one of the main stable enemies for the Mario brothers. All right, so touch the bottom block to collect a raccoon leaf. As you continue, I recommend staying as high as possible since this level is filled with chain chomps. Here, we need to use and kick a Koopa shell towards the right into the small opening to reveal a vine. Now climb the vine up, then head left to reach a warp pipe. There's a P block located in the bottom row above you. Hit it and continue coin collecting. Now we're at the end of the level. Hit the last few remaining item blocks if you like to, otherwise just head for the exit. Also, there's a chain chomp waiting for you there. So now it's time to collect the final wart whistle. Head to the hammer bro at the bottom of the map. Defeat him to gain the hammer item. From here, we need to go all the way to the upper right corner of the map, then use the hammer on this rock to remove it. This will reveal a secret area on the map. Now our destination is to hammer bro towards the bottom of the map. Actually, this enemy is really two fire brothers. Defeat them both to claim the last warp whistle. Now with that's done, we should have all three warp whistles. Cool. This level is the underground stage of World 2. And as seen with most underground areas, it has plentiful buzzy beetles and warp pipes. Now this level has many dead ends for the most part, but the main thing to keep in mind is to keep going to the right. 
when looking at the level as a whole, it sort of looks like a labyrinth area, but it's not. Also, I would like to mention that Raccoon's Mario Tail Smack is highly beneficial here, more specifically when breaking brick walls. Otherwise, we will have to rely on Buzzy Beetle's shell to pass by them. So this section with the slope here is dangerous since there's a hole at the bottom of it. I wouldn't recommend sliding here. Okay, so that was Ultra Instinct Mario. It was definitely a close call there. And once we pass the brick wall, we are literally at the end of the stage. I have to say, some of the enemy placement towards the gold box can be diabolical. So this airship is the same as before, but with a different layout and a few new enemies. And with all airships, we have to move along with the auto scrolling. This level is not hard, but I made some clumsy mistakes here. The main thing here is to keep your eye on the up and down movement of the ship. So while this is going on, we also have to pay attention to the bullet bills and other various projectiles. To be honest, I'm not too happy about the gameplay here, but being that I'm hard pressed for time, it ended up making the final cut. So at this point, we should start seeing the Rocky Wrench enemy, which is a mode that throws wrenches at the Mario Brothers. You can easily defeat them in many different ways, but the problem is, they always respawn almost instantly. Now, let's get ready to face Morton Koopa in a boss battle. So, Morton will shoot loops at you with a magic wand just like Larry. The main difference here is that he's a lot slower and he uses the wand more frequently. Avoid them and jump on his head. You have to jump on his head three times to score the win. So with Morton Cooper defeated, we can now journey over to the next world. So that's it for this edition of Classic Gaming featuring Super Mario Bros. 3. I'm Dad Mishima. See you in World 3.